Welcome to Growing Belleville Through Community Chats, a podcast presented by the Greater Belleville Chamber of Commerce to help highlight, promote, and enlighten people, businesses, and community events in the Greater Belleville area. Here are your hosts, Stephen Sedlak and Eric Huber. Good afternoon and welcome to the first ever episode of the Growing Belleville Through Community Chats presented by the Greater Belleville Chamber of Commerce. I am your co-host, Stephen Selleck, along with Eric Huber. Eric, how are you? Doing Good. well, Steve. Enjoying the nice warm weather today, right? Oh, Good. absolutely. Well, we have our first guest on the first ever podcast here, Miss Patty Gregory. Patty, how are you? I'm doing great. Good. It, it's a hot one out there today. It is. It's the dog days of summer, right? Unfortunately. Good. <laughs> but every day is a good day. <laughs> good. Well, I know a lot of people probably know who you are, but for the ones that don't, why don't you just kind of give a little background about yourself? Okay. Uh, well, I was a school teacher for 32 years. Of, of that time, 18 years, I spent teaching children with special needs with behavior and emotional issues. And uh, I spent 14 years in second grade and I retired from second grade. Uh, I also was a founder and executive director of Art on the Square for the past 20 years. Uh, And now I'm the first female mayor of Belleville in 207 years. That is awesome. So that's kind of exciting. That's awesome. Congrats on that, Patty. Very exciting. So, a little more in depth, what do you like to do for fun? Well, my husband says that I'm a workaholic, which I, I am. It's from my mother's side of the family and my dad's, okay. but more my mother's. But uh, actually, I love to garden. I have 93 hydrangea bushes in my backyard, uh, a lot of watering, a lot of like sewer bills from the city of Belleville in the, the summertime, especially. <laughs> uh, so I do love to garden. I like doing it on my own. Uh, uh, some friends of mine, we two, three ladies put in uh, a couple years ago, uh, two 50 foot trench drains and we laid 5,000 pounds of rock. And then I just I had this grandiose idea to start all these gardens around the French drain and a dry Creek. And, so now I have created a, another massive job for myself, uh, which when I started it, I was in my early 30s, and now I'm in my late 60s. So it's, uh, it's a little different as far as uh, time in the, in the yard, but I still love doing that. I love to cook. I love to entertain. And, of course, I, I love art. So uh, in volunteering in the community. Okay. So that, that's pretty well has kept me busy. I came out of 12 years of retirement to uh, run for mayor, mm-hmm. and so it's it's a new adventure in my life, but I think it came at a really good time. So I'm, I'm anxious to work with the people in the community, as I've always done as a volunteer, and, and we're just going to keep moving forward. Well, I... yeah, Patty, I, uh, uh, congrats again on, on being elected mayor. That's awesome. First first uh female mayor as you as you mentioned uh touch on that a little bit like you said you came kind of came out of retirement thought it was a great time to get into into this position into the political world with with really no political background so what what was it about right now this time that kind of felt right for you well i actually have a minor in political science so i've always been involved in politics in one way or the other and, of course, my husband thinks I've always been a politician, but uh, usually it's something at home when I'm trying to uh, change his mind about <laughs> something. But uh, actually, I, I always have said I'm running, I ran for emotional reasons because I have, ever since I was a little girl and I would drive every Sunday to Prairie de Rocher where my granny lived on my mom's side, you know, the fried chicken dinner every Sunday. And so we would go (laughs) down, and the minute I would see the fountain, I would make my father drive around it five or six times because I was so in love with the beauty of the fountain. And I kept saying, one day I'm going to live in Belleville. I'm going to live in Belleville. And and here I am now after all these years living in Belleville and and the mayor of the city. 
But that's when I actually fell in love with Belleville. Uh, the fountain just drew my attention as a, a young child. And, and then when I moved here and I met the people of Belleville and saw what they are all about and how committed they are to volunteerism and, and to this community, I, I knew it, when I moved here, I knew I wanted to stay here. And, and so if I'm staying here and I'm living here, I'm going to try to make uh, the city the best place for not only myself and my family, but also for my neighbors and for the residents of Belleville. Because we have a lot to offer and I think we have a big story to tell. I think you make a good point. I think, you know, uh, having somebody in charge, not saying that nobody in the past has, that, that really truly loves and cares for the city uh, and wants to see it grow and succeed is it, it, very important. Um, and taking, for you taking a step out of retirement to come back to it, I think just says a lot, you know, about yourself and how much you care about the community. I'll tell you, it was kind of a shock, though, on my first day. You know, I was sworn in on May 1st, and then the morning of May 3rd came, and I thought, oh, my gosh, i got to get up. <laughs> <laughs> and now I've got to do this for the next four years. <laughs> you know? but, uh, I have enjoyed every minute of it, and it's it's so exciting to to think about the possibilities and to be working on those possibilities to move our, our community in the right direction. And I see a lot of good days coming forward for Belleville. And uh, also, you know, we we have our residents that, that pay taxes and I believe in being fiscally responsible and, and uh, looking at everything of how we approach things. I believe in being extremely proactive because sometimes when you're just reactive or you sit and try to push problems to the side, they just compound and get worse. And then it's even a bigger battle to fight. So I, I always have tried to be proactive. Uh, I believe in team cooperation. One thing when I have hired uh, new hires, I look for multi-talented people because I do not want people sitting in a room just working behind a desk. I want people telling, you know, working with other people, giving out ideas, cross, cross curriculum, as we would say in, in school, uh, working together and in bringing solutions to problems and also thinking outside the box. I mean, when we started Art on the Square, um, I, I had studied art shows two and a half years and traveled the country for almost three years looking at art shows all across the country and meeting artists. So when I had the first meeting, I had the, the plan all worked out, the lesson plan as a teacher, and also the business plan and model. So I'm bringing those same skills here to City Hall, and I feel like it's, it's really been working well for us. And it's also the team building is so important to make people feel part of a family. And that's, I, I would love for that to permeate through the whole town, you know, respect, appreciation, uh, neighbor, being involved with your neighbors, involved with your churches. And I think that can also help move a community forward in a positive direction. I, I want to get back to, you said, you know, you got sworn in May 1st and May 3rd, you know, you kind of woke up and said, oh my gosh, I got to get up today. <laughs> kind of going back to that, what, you know, since the time period that you have been, you know, May 1st here or whatever, what's been the most surprising or maybe the most difficult thing that you've come across? Because going into a different role than you would have previously had, you know, as a teacher, and even with the Art in the Square, it, it's it's different. But I guess what is the one thing or, or a couple of things that have been the most challenging for you to kind of, as you stepped into this role? Well, I think think when you have an incumbent that's been uh, in charge for 16 years, you know, and this is in any type of job that you have, that people sometimes have uh, a little bit difficulty with change. And whether it's in a good or bad direction, there's a lot of times when we're fearful of change, no matter what. And that has been one thing that uh, I sometimes feel a little challenged by and to uh, let people see the difference that um, different ways that we can do things. Uh, but I, I'm getting great cooperation and really have had some 
wonderful discussion, which is another reason why I am not a micromanager. I believe in letting people talk. I mean, the second day I was here, I, I had a meeting at the police station, and it was kind of funny because the chief of police said, oh, we're saving that spot for you at the head of the table. And I said, why? I was sitting on the side, and he said, oh, no, that's the mayor's chair. And I said, I said, oh, no, I said, that should be your chair because, you know, you're the chief, and I've never shot a gun off before. <laughs> I don't want to. So anyway, we kind of got a laugh over it because, you know, after working for 20 years with so many of the city employees, he was calling me mayor, and, and I said, oh, you don't have to call me mayor, just... You know, call me Patty. We worked all these years together, and, and we know each other personally. And, and then, of course, uh, he said, well, I better call you mayor. That's what I'm used to, and uh, you know, for respect for the office. And I said, that's fine, but don't call me your honor. And so, and so then I waited after they all were laughing, and then I waited a few minutes. And then I, I, I used to be in theater, so I had a little timing going on here. Yeah. So I kind of giggled and smiled and said, real quietly, but you can call me your highness. <laughs> they always laughing. So, but I have to say, you ask about challenges. I mean, that's been one of the things that uh, after I was elected, uh, I had the opportunity to talk with Herb Roach, the O'Fallon mayor, and we had a wonderful conversation, and with Mark Kupski, and one uh, Fairview Heights. And one of the things that and Mark and I have known each other for years, one of the things he said, I know what might be the hardest thing for you to do let people call you mayor right. he said i felt the same way because you know it is it is kind of funny to hear your your name behind the word mayor and uh but yet it's it's uh it's a new adventure and i put my heart and soul into everything that i decide to do and i do a lot of research a lot of studying and i'm i'm using those skills to uh think out and thinking outside the box more creatively to move the city in, in a new direction. So I, I've been enjoying doing that and meeting people along the way. Well, good. Um, you know, of course, COVID put a damper on a lot of stuff in the city. Mm -hmm. so not just our city, but every city in the state and countrywide. Now we have a lot of uh, events coming up this fall, projected events. Hopefully yes, we do. Through. What is your take on that? I mean, you know, I mean, I think it's phenomenal. I know me and Eric have talked about it. We think it's just going to be a, a buzz for downtown area and really help out a lot of these restaurants and uh, and businesses down here. But kind of what uh, what is your hope with, with everything and how they can, help, you know, grow Belva? Well, I actually, when I was campaigning, I talked a lot about how we could come out of this pandemic. And we could either come out in a negative way or we can come out in a positive way. I always felt that in many ways, we were more fortunate than some of the other towns in our area. And the reason I say that is Belleville was always built on mom and pop businesses. And we see big box stores going out all across the country, not just because of the pandemic, but also because of more people shopping online uh, and, and other for other reasons, overbuilding uh, that has taken place over the years. And, you know, so I have been a member of a group called strongtowns.org. Very interesting uh, podcast and a lot of information. And, and one of their things that they said that have we built ourselves so much that we've built ourselves into bankruptcy? And it is an interesting thought because we we sometimes don't think about maintenance and things down the road. That when we build these things, we have to take care of them, and and that type of thing. So I always felt that we would come out of the pandemic in a positive way, because first of all, nobody has community spirit like Belva. I mean, I think just the idea that for two hundred and seven years all the things we have been able to accomplish with volunteers is pretty amazing. And, uh, and I think that is one of the strengths of our community. Plus, we've been very supportive of, of our businesses and of each other. And when you have a lot of box stores now that's, that are closing, uh, you know, issues with uh, the large ma malls that have some of the bigger stores closed, I think 
that's a big shoe to fill. And here we are in the situation where we have a lot of community owned businesses. And I think and a lot of commitment to those businesses. And I think we're in an opportunity that we have things that we have to do to support and continue on, but we also have uh, other issues that are not quite as big as some of the other places because of what has been built and what is now gone. Uh, we've been working very hard on on a lot of, uh, you know, we lost St. Elizabeth and Lindenwood. Uh, in the past several years, we've lost some high paying salary jobs and we do have to bring those back. And I, before I even was elected, I had been meeting with um, building contractors, with, um, with economic developers, uh, people that uh, bring business into our town's commercial real estate to find out exactly what they saw as issues in Belleville that we needed to address to attract more and more business and new businesses to the town. Uh, so I, I have appreciated all of their, their comments and I have been meeting with several of them. And, you know, I, I think a good leader does not think that they know everything. Right. Cause nobody I knows agree. everything. Yep. And I'm very willing, if I don't know an answer, I'm not going to lie about it and act like I know it. I'm going to go find the information and talk to the experts and and get the answer for people. And through doing that process, which I've done pretty much through my whole life as, as far as being in careers, I think that's how we even learn more in different ways to approach things. So I really have been very grateful to the people that have stepped forward because I've, I've asked for help. And I always say, well, I used to say Patty Gregory, desperate woman, especially when I started the art show, because I was desperate, right. <laughs> really desperate. Uh, since, you know, the first year it was 98000 to put on, and, and in 2019 it was 573000 that had to be raised by the time with inflation and all of our outreach programs that we have added into it and, and other things that, that the art show brings to the community. But... You know, it's telling people that I'm not ashamed to ask for help. I'm not embarrassed because that's how we learn from each other. And and so I, I basically have gone to people that haven't built here in years, and I've asked them why, and I've asked them, I, I tell them, I need your help. I, and the response no, I, has I been think, uh, uh, remarkable because they want to help. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's... Just like what you're saying there, Patty, is is the why. You know, we as you mentioned, we we've lost some big companies in Belleville, but one thing. I mean, I was born and raised Belleville. My parents still live in Belleville. We still live in Belleville. Uh, I'm a Belleville guy. I got the stories like you said when I was a little kid. I mean, you run around that fountain a couple times because you wanted to see oh, the yeah. light show and exactly. see, you know, different yeah. colors, everything. So this square is a, a staple spot to many people. Um, I think that the opportunities there with Belleville, I'm, I mean, I, I myself looking forward to, to someone as passionate as you, like you said, take something like art on the square all the way up to a, 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 the number one art show in the country. Uh, it, the opportunities there, the question has to be the, the, the why not us, you know, why not Belleville and, and get those answers. Uh, I love the fact that you have the team of, of, people who are diverse in every aspect type of deal as mm -hmm. well because you know you're going to get those ideas from from your team not one person exactly uh when you're when you're bouncing everything around so no i'm looking for i mean i think the the opportunities there and and looking forward to to see what what you're able to do in your in your term here that's yeah. awesome and we have so many people who are committed to this town and they want to see Belleville succeed. And actually, I f have found out our neighbors want to see Belleville succeed because when we're all together, and there are, I think it's just good for the whole county and for the whole section, you know, our whole area of Illinois. And in fact, when I went to speak with uh, 
Mayor Roach and uh, Mayor Kovsky, you know, we talked about things that we could collaborate. You know, crime has no boundaries. Homelessness has no boundaries. And these are all issues that we should be working together on. We also talked about the fact that, you know, there's ways that communities could save money by co-oping and buying even chip and oil and salt for the roads together and uh, getting better pricing. And uh, so we're looking at cooperating uh, with, with all of the communities and, and really seeing how we can be working together to move us as a group forward. I, I agree with that's you. That's important. I, I think not even just the communities around here. I think, you know, even St. Louis, right? I think as St. Louis grows or rebounds back, all it's going to do is strengthen Belleville, O'Fallon, Shiloh, the areas around here. Um, if there's a way to help curve crime in St. Louis, it's going to help curve crime over here, that type of thing. So I think the whole region, I know we say the Metro East region or the St. Louis region a lot, you know, but I think those I think everything's very intertwined. I don't think, you know, a lot of communities wish, you know, we're doing better than that community per se. I think like what you said, if everybody's doing good and everybody hopes everybody's doing good, we're all going to move in the same direction. And, you know, that was one thing that I really admired Edwardsville for uh, when they, they started a task force because they were having some crime issues and a lot was coming from St. Louis area. And of course, now we're also mobile, that you can go any place and, and uh, fairly easy. And so we do have to work together as teams, just as St. Louis have, you know, is doing that. And it is, it's really important for our whole region to prosper. Do you, I'm curious in your opinion on this, do you, you know, with the pandemic and everything and how a lot of people started working from home and a lot of mm -hmm. you know, St. Louis businesses were having people work from home, do you see that as possibly being a benefit for the Belleville area now that people might look to move here, you know, maybe out of the city or out of St. Louis area, possibly to somewhere a little more cost effective per se, or just a different change that now they can, you know, now they can possibly work from home full time and they could move here. I mean, what's your kind of take on that? Well, actually, that was one of the things that I had talked about because, you know, some places have built these huge high rises, and now are they actually using these apart these, you know, office buildings? Mm -hmm. And you know, that was another thing that, I mean, we have a few large office buildings, but nothing like they have in St. Louis right. and some of the other areas. But to me, that was a plus for us because of the fact, as I said before, it didn't give us a large area that would have to be filled with something. And besides a storage. Lot, right, yeah, those are going which, everywhere. Uh, which I, 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 I'm like, oh no, not another storage, but anyway. <laughs> so uh, I do, in my opinion, I do think that we are going to see uh, a lot of people working from home. And, you know, a lot of people, even when I was running for mayor, I met several people that had businesses in other areas north of here, up by the Chicago area, and they came into my uh, campaign office, and they said, we lived in Belleville, but we have our business in, like, Peoria or, you know, Morton or up in the Chicago area, but we, we realized we can move back to our hometown. And we can work right there now that we know we can run our business from our our living room or kitchen. Yeah. And, you know, that yeah. is an opportunity for people that wanted to move home uh, and come back to their community. It's, it's brought a lot of people thinking about moving home. And also during the pan pandemic, all the emotional strain, besides financial, but also emotional strain that people went through. I think the fact that we started thinking more about our families, our friends, the importance of our lives, our health, and because of that, I think we see a different attitude instead of constantly chasing, 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 and we need to have it now. I think we, we see a, a different attitude in people that they're looking differently at things than what they did before. because. We all have to admit it was a massive shock mm -hmm. and just kind of overnight with 
nothing to prepare us for. And I, I think, think it was a wake-up call. I think that's an understatement of it being a, a shock. I think yeah. it was, you know, it was supposed to be a 14-day, and then it turned into that. It was just more confusing, <laughs> I think, for people as well. But, yeah, oh, yeah. to think back where we were a year ago, or even more than a year ago, it's... I saw a text message that from a group of friends of mine that we had last March. We hadn't looked at it again. We do it for the NCAA tournament, and we didn't look at it again until this March. And I go, guys, you got to go back and you got to read these text messages. We're talking about, oh my gosh, we're talking about shutting down schools. And was kind of think of how unprepared we really were for how long everything was going to last. Yes, and I think it wasn't just us; it was the whole world. Oh yeah, you know, and because yeah. of that, I think that it has caused everybody to really totally rethink their lives and what they're doing in their lives. You know, and, and it's, it's, it's been a wake-up call. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, it, it saddens me that, you know, the other day, we, yesterday we had a 9.2 increase in COVID cases, and we all do not want to go back to the situation. Right. So I'm hopeful that we get this under control and of course, with the events downtown, and and as a, a person that helps put on events, and you know, you worry about the weather, but now you have to worry about a whole nother factor. And of course, you're spending marketing dollars, mm -hmm. and then if you have to be closed down, you know, because of of COVID and health issues, you know, that's a lot of money that could be lost for non for profits. And we certainly have our good share in good things with our non-for-profits here in the city. I think I always say per capita, we may have more non-for-profits here in Belleville than we do in St. Louis even, yeah. So, uh, which is yeah. a good thing. But, uh, you know, we all have to be very cautious about what, how we spend our money our, and be proactive in our thought processes. And I just, it has caused us to rethink our lives. But for yeah. the good, really, in a lot of ways. Yeah. Yeah, let's stay safe. We need those events this uh, this fall. If one thing Belleville knows how to do, it's throw a uh, yeah. throw a party down. Oh, they do. I, I think that in the parades. Yeah, <laughs> exactly the parade. That's that was the first thing this summer. I know early this fall. I mean, everybody was asking the Shriners parade. You know, is it going to happen? Is it not? So I mean, it, yeah. I think many people have that November fifth date uh, for the Shriners parade marked on the calendars oh, ready to yes. go and you know with art on the square i really did not want to go two years without having it uh it's it's so uh it's a 11 month out of the year job but we have 600 volunteers every year that help put it on during the weeks before but during the year we have about 50 people on a committee and they're all we people don't get paid for it they do it as i did for a you know, for a love of a community. Uh -huh. And it mm -hmm. brings a lot of economic impact into the community. And sometimes I think people, oh, it's just another fair or party, but they don't think about the residual effects of when we bring people in, especially from out of town, you know, the residual spending that's going on in our restaurants, our gas stations, and, and all over. So, you know, it, it's a plus, plus the marketing value it brings to the city yeah. is so important. Yeah, no, I think it's important for the for all those businesses, not just in the downtown area, but around, you know, just in the Belleville area, that, mm -hmm. the, the income that will be coming from those people coming into town for those. And uh, I'm looking forward to them. I know me and Eric have talked many times about how full our calendar looks for, for fall. And we're pretty hopeful that We're all going to be busy. Yes. Are we going to be ready for Christmas? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we may be tired out by then, guys. My, Hopefully yeah, not. My kids won't yeah. let me be tired out by then. So. <laughs> <laughs> we just we just did Christmas in July with half of our family because we didn't celebrate during COVID last year. So I, I'm already got the Christmas done for this year in my mind. <laughs> well, well, and you know, it will be six months after October to do the next Art on the Square. So that's going to be interesting to see what it's going to be. And, of course, with the vaccinations and with the COVID, we will be looking at a more modified event. I know with our high school going back, you know, end of August, 1st of September, we will not be having the high school exhibit this year because our high school artists will not have time to get their piece together for the show. And, and there will be some modifications, but it's all about the art 
and uh, about a community coming together and supporting not only Art on the Square, but all the other events that we can be proud of. And uh, I think we're going to have uh, a great amount of people visiting us in, in the fall. Well, I think people are ready, right? And, and even if it's modified or a house got to change, you know, I had my first conference, in-person conference in June. It was my first one since February, right before the pandemic mm -hmm. hit. And I told you, I, I couldn't believe how much I missed conferences. I used to dread going to most of them. There's a few I liked, but it was just so good to be in a room full of people and just socialize and converse with them, um, you know, not barring the content of what was there, but just to have that. And that's what people have missed and, and are striving to get back to. So I think even in a modified state, I think people are still going to be extremely grateful and happy to, you know, be at these events. And we're, I'm really thinking outside the box. Uh, I have reviewed with other people and spoken with a lot of different people about issues facing us and uh, prioritizing those issues. What are the first things that we need to be working on that will bring, bring in residual effects? Uh, we all know with the loss of Lindenwood and St. Elizabeth, we did lose high salary paying jobs. So it's important that we focus on, on bringing in things that actually will bring in higher paying jobs, which will uh, start new development, uh, bring in companies that may have more employees. And these are all things that, that as a mayor and our aldermen and all our constituents need to be thinking about uh, and working together. We are going to be doing uh, some things in cooperation with the county as, you know, like our Halloween event downtown. And I'd love to see a storytelling festival uh, with on a small scale that would be like spooky stories and in buildings and for children and maybe in the restaurants and some of the libation areas, uh, a story, cool. spooky stories for adults. But I mean, there's all <laughs> kinds of, of different things, but you know, these are all quality of life issues also. And I think that is one thing we have beautiful parks. We will be working on doing some different things in our parks making them more uh, educational centers also. That's the teacher and me. I mean, that's one of my goals and objectives. And I, I do believe that uh, with all of our sculptures that we have in the city, the beautiful historical districts that we have, and we will be uh, showing those. At the first Art on the Square, we had our first lofts downtown. It's, so we did have a loft tour, but we also will be having uh, beautiful mansions downtown that you would be paying millions of dollars for in St. Louis that have been renovated by these young couples and they've just been doing amazing work and we can't miss the opportunities to show what we have to offer so we, we will be opening up some of those homes for tours and uh, I think it's a great opportunity because when people come to Belleville and they see Belleville and they move here they love it it, and so it's very important that we, every time we, we do something with our events or with companies, it's a great way to promote our city and what all we have to offer. I mean, nobody has uh, 207, the 207 years of history that has been just so engrossing for our town and differentiates us from a lot of newer towns in the area. So these are all things that we need to be, we need to be progressive, but we also need to think about our traditions in our town. Uh, we are working on a new website. Uh, we are working on a new logo. I did hear right? that. Yeah. And uh, I think that will be more progressive, a lot of color, uh, very attractive to people. And I think it's something that people that are older will enjoy. and people that are younger will enjoy and, and speaks to change, but still speaks to tradition. And uh, very excited about some of the things, especially with District 201, buying Kings Point and having the opportunity to have, we always have had unbelievable vocational programs in our, in our high schools, probably the best in the area, if I do say so myself. No, uh, I, I and, agree. I think what they've done is yeah. just awesome. 
it's awesome. And, you know, uh, as a teacher, not every child is college bound. And to learn vocation, uh, a lot of times, uh, uh, you know, people that are plumbers and welders, uh, and we need those desperately because all these years we've pushed college, college, college. And you need an electrician and a plumber. You need them. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm, I'm happy. And the fact that we're going to be having culinary classes and vocational, I mean, we all know that foodie is a big thing. And, uh, yes. and I think these are yep. all opportunities that as a city, we, with our, the progress that we are making in those areas, really differentiates us also uh, with our school system. And uh, so I find it to be very exciting and very grateful that, that they were able to do that. And we have some new exciting things on the horizon that we have been working on since May 1st and uh, looking forward to, to letting the public know some of the things that are coming and, and uh, just continuing to work. No, well, hey, look, we're coming up here a little past 30 minutes or so, and we want to be respectful to your time. So, um, I have a tendency to talk too much. <laughs> no, well. you're, I you're right. hey, well, that's <laughs> I know right. you guys can't believe that. <laughs> no, that's good. <laughs> no, but we just were respectful of your time, and we appreciate you coming on. Um, you know, I just want to leave you with one quick question is what, in a year from now, where do you, where do you kind of see things being? Your, your first year into to being Mayor Patty Gregory, where, where do you see things being? Well, I had a list of things that I wanted to work on from uh, from the very beginning that I had thought about and researched for a long time. Uh, of course, we uh, I, I look forward to seeing something different where we had 16 city blocks gone with the loss of the hospital. I look forward to having uh, really great things going on with the loss of Lindenwood. Uh, to replace things there that need to help move our city forward, just as we want to replace things with that we had with St. Elizabeth Hospital. I hope to have new development uh, and also infill projects throughout the city. I think it's very important. We are a city with old housing stock. Uh, I'm looking forward and have been working to find out exactly where we have properties that we own, where we have demolished homes in the past, and uh, contacting contractors that that are interested in working with those and in building homes that are uh, that fit into the neighborhood. Like if you're in a craftsman's neighborhood, let's build a craftsman craftsman home, and and giving those properties and getting them back on the tax rolls. I think that's really important. So I hope that I can accomplish. I'd love to accomplish all of it, but we, we never know what's ahead of us. But I plan on having um, more positive things going. And, and with the trust and the, and the help of the community and with people that have come forward already to say we want to help, I think we can achieve a lot for our community. It, you know, I've always been a person. I, you know, I always, that little saying, build it and they will come. I'm always like, okay, we're going to do this. I mean, remember the first Art in the Square meeting, and they said, what are we going to do? I said, we are going to be the smallest, most exclusive show in the country, and in the first five years, we're going to be number one out of 6,000 art shows across the country. Of course, everybody looked at me like I was a fool, but we did it. <laughs> you know, and we did it as a group and all together. And, and so I, I'm hoping that's exactly what we'll see in the year. So there's a lot to think about there and a is. lot to do. There is. I'm going to have to get some beauty rest, though. Look at this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. oh, come on now. But anyway, okay. so I'm anxious. I'm anxious for all the possibilities that all of us have together. And and I just want to thank the people of Belleville for putting their trust in me. It's 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 a big job, and I need all the help. <laughs> Well, and I, you, you, I think it's going to be great, though. We wish you the best of luck, and we want to thank you for being the first ever guest on the Growing Bevel Through Community Chats presented by the Bevel Chamber of Commerce. So, again, thank you, and uh, everybody have a good day. Well, I thank you so much yeah. for inviting me. Thank you. So, we thanks, just got to keep moving. Absolutely. That's right. We move forward. <laughs> All right. That's thanks. right. Take care. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Growing Belleville Through Community Chats podcast. 
please remember to follow and subscribe to this podcast and share with your friends and community leaders. For additional information from this podcast, please reach out to the Greater Belleville Chamber of Commerce.